Section 1.5, Factoring Polynomials. The greatest common factor of polynomials is the largest polynomial that divides evenly into the polynomials. In fact, often it is a monomial, um, a single term that divides evenly into every term. So on example one, factoring 6x cubed y cubed plus 45x squared y squared plus 21xy, what is a factor of all of these? Well, they're all different, right? But we can notice that they all have an x term. They all have a y or a component to them, an x and a y. They also have constants. So I want to see what goes evenly, what divides evenly into each one. And it appears that 3, yes, 3 goes into all of them. They all have at least one x and they all contain at least one y. Okay. Uh, this is the biggest polynomial, the largest polynomial that will go into all of them. Okay. So 3xy divides into 21xy into 45x squared y squared and 6x cubed y cubed. Now how we determine what is left over here, okay, that's our greatest common factor. Effectively what we're going to do, and this is a little bit of an abuse of notation, but effectively I'm dividing each of these terms by 3xy. And we'll have to use our exponent properties here. So for the first expression, that's going to be 6 divided by 3 or 2. We'll have an x squared and a y squared. So a 2x squared y squared. Next, 45 divided by 3. That will be a 15. 15, and that'll be an x term, x and a y component to that. And the last one we get plus 7, the x and the y cancel out. So factoring, when you see that direction, what, what the intention there is, is you are writing whatever it is you're given, your polynomial, you're writing it as a product of two things. We're trying to write it as the simplest product. We're breaking it down, kind of like prime factorization. How if I give you a number like 21, and I write it as 3 times 7, that's a product that is a simpler form of the same thing. They, it represents the same thing as 21, um, but in some context, 21 is better than 3 times 7. Or a better example, 45 is 3 squared times 5. 3 squared is 9, 9 times 5 is 45. So that is a, these, a broken down version of 45. That's really what I'm doing when I say factor. And that's why we call that a prime factorization. So if we have a trinomial with a leading coefficient of 1, that is, it's of the form x squared plus bx plus c, it can be written in a factor form as x plus p, in quantity, times x plus q, quantity, where p times q equals c and p plus q equals b. That is, these two numbers are chosen so that they multiply to be our constant term and they add to be our x terms coefficient. So if we go to look for numbers that multiply to be negative 15, but we want them to add to be 2. That's, that's the idea. They need to multiply to be negative 15, but add to be 2. Our constant and our coefficient on x, respectively. So I'd go down my list. 1, negative 15, doesn't work. 3 and 5, how about 3 and negative 5? That doesn't work. How about 3 and 5? How about a negative 3? Negative 3 plus 5 is, in fact, 2. So these are the two that I want. Now, based on this statement here, I can write this as x minus 3, x plus 5. Now, from our last section, we can multiply this out. I'm going to do this very quickly. x times x. Okay, so actually, let me just go over here x minus 3, x plus 5 would be x squared plus 5x minus 3x minus 15, which is x squared plus 2x minus 15. Can you see why they need to add, why they need to add to be 2, but multiply to be 15? That's where, that's where we're getting those rules from. So that is, in fact, what we started with. So this is the simpler version, our factored form. Now, the leading coefficient is not always 1. 
fact, often it's not. So we would take a slightly different approach. So I'm going to do the same question again. All right. First, I'm going to find my two numbers, negative 15, and we said negative 3 and 5 adds to be 2. So we'll go ahead and take, take those two numbers. Now how I'm going to do this, I'm going to break my middle term down as x squared minus 3x plus 5x minus 15. Which if you notice, that's the form I have right here, slightly rearranged. Then I'm going to factor by grouping, which means I'm going to find the GCF, the greatest common factor of the first two and the second two separately. The first two have an x in common. Factoring that out, I get x minus 3. Okay, now my second two have a 5 in common, so I'll take a positive 5 out, leaving me with an x minus 3. What you should notice at this point is they both have an x minus 3. So I'm going to take out the x minus 3, and what I have left is x, x plus 5. So here we go, we have x plus 5. So I, get, I have the same answer here. Two different ways to do it. They're about the same amount of work, except that the second factoring session here okay, works always, no matter what the leading coefficient is. It's called factoring by grouping, which is what we're going to see in this next question. Um, and here are the, in words, the step-by-step -step of doing that. I'm just going to leave it with that example and leave it to you to read that. Um, so, factor 5x squared plus 7x minus 6. There's one thing that's going to change, and that is I'm going to multiply my 5 times negative 6. Negative 30. So I want numbers that multiply to be negative 30 that add to be 7. I'm going to add to be 7. So let's go down a list here. 1 and negative 30. Well, and it's going to have to add to be positive, so I should probably move my negative sign there. How about negative 1 and 30? Negative 2 and 15? No. Negative 3 and 10? Yes. Negative 3 and 10. So I'm going to break this apart as 5x squared minus 3x plus 10x minus 6. Factoring the first two, all they have in common is an x. So I'm going to factor that x out, which gives me 5x minus 3. Now the second two are both even, so I know I can take a 2 out, which leaves me with a 5x minus 3. This tells me I did something right because I've got a common term here. So 5x minus 3 and my leftovers are x plus 2. Now let's just say I want to be certain of my answer because I do. Let's multiply this out. 5x squared plus 10x minus 3x minus 6. 5x squared plus 7x minus 6. Bingo we worked that correctly. Alright, example four. A perfect square trinomial is one that can be written as the square of a binomial. So we can factor it the same way that we did in the last couple, except we might have something multiplied by itself. So I'm actually going to do this one twice. First, I want to recognize this one is a perfect square trinomial. Now the way I would identify that is my a squared, so my a value would actually be 5x here. It's what's being squared to get my first term. If you can kind of see, I'm trying, attempting to match these two together. My b is what is squared to get 4, so that is 2. Now, next I want to make sure that I have a 2ab in here. So 2ab would be 2 times a times b which is 20x, which is in fact what I have. So what that tells me is I can work this, I can factor this to be 5x plus 2 squared.
because it fits the form of a perfect square trinomial. Now, if my b term had been negative, been a minus there, uh, then this would have been 5x, or if the, sorry, if the 2ab term, that had been negative, uh, then I would have ended up with a 5x minus 2 squared. Now, I'm going to go ahead and factor this using grouping. Okay, this is one thing I want you to be able to see. Okay, but grouping will always work. So if I were to factor this by grouping, I'd say 25 times 4, which would be 100. And I want numbers that multiply to be 100 that add to be 20. And hopefully you're thinking, well, 10 and 10. Yes, exactly. So I'm going to write this as 25 x squared plus 10x plus 10x plus 4. Factoring by grouping, I'm going to take out a 5x, which leaves me with 5x plus 2. Looks familiar, right? And taking out a 2, which leaves me with a 5x plus 2. So that this is 5x plus 2 times 5x plus 2, which is 5x plus 2 squared. I get the same answer, different amount of work. Factor by grouping works always. Perfect square trinomials only work when they're perfect square trinomials. But if you have something that might look like be in that might be in that form where the first and the last term are both perfect squares, try it. I mean, it can't hurt, um, but factor by grouping will not fail you. All right, difference of squares. A difference of squares can be written as two factors containing the same terms but opposite signs. So if I have two perfect squares, a squared minus b squared, then it factors as a plus b, quantity, times a minus b. This is a tactic that is much easier, much e more easily recognizable because we have two terms rather than our traditional three in a trinomial. Okay, so this is a quadratic, has a, a squared power there, a second power, and it's two terms. So these are both perfect squares. Okay, so in this case, my a is 3x because 3x squared is 9x squared, and my b is 5. So this will factor as 3x plus 5 times 3x minus 5. You can, in fact, work this with grouping. You'd say our middle term is 0. You could write it as 9x squared minus 0x minus 25, and you could do grouping from there. I'm not going to do that here, but you can if you'd like to deal with it that way. All right, next we have a sum and difference of cubes. We can factor a sum of two cubes as a cubed plus b cubed is a plus b quantity times a squared minus ab plus b squared. And a difference of cubes, a cubed minus b cubed, a minus b, a squared plus ab plus b squared. An acronym that I've seen used and they use this in the book is SOAP. That is same opposite, oops, always positive. That is, the first sign here is the same, the second is opposite, and the last one is always positive. You notice we have minus, 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 plus, always plus. Plus, 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 minus, always plus. Okay, so SOAP tells you the, the signs there. Now, these formulas only work when you have a perfect cubes, when you have a set of perfect cubes. So in this case, I'm going to go ahead and write this as x cubed plus, now what could I cube, what could I cube to get 512? Well, that would be 8 cubed. 8 cubed. So this would factor as, okay, I'm going to go ahead and write this as a is x, b equals 8. So following my first formula there, that would be x plus 8, x squared minus 8x plus 64. That would be the b squared, 8 squared to 64. Okay, there we are. 
Now let's look at number seven. This is a difference of cubes. So in this case, I can write this as 2x cubed minus 5 cubed. All right, so this will factor as 2x minus 5. That's the same. The next is the opposite. Oh, I should have finished writing this. All right, so a squared. So we'll have 4x squared squaring 2x. Same, opposite. So this will be a, b. So this will be 10x multiplying the 2x and the 5. Always positive, this will be 25. Now, one question might be, do either of these factor more? Because they can, and they often do, factor again. Now, the first one we did does not, and the second one does not. So, but be on the lookout, because you might end up with something that is a perfect square trinomial or something of that nature. Okay, so keep that in mind that you can actually factor some of these more than once. All right, the last example we have, factoring expressions with fractional or negative exponents. Expressions with fractional or negative exponents can be factored by pulling out a GCF. Look for the variable or exponent that's common to each term of the expression and pull that variable or exponent raised to the lowest power. These expressions follow the same factoring rules as those with integer exponents. So if you look at number eight, first thing we should notice is that we have an x plus two as in both of these. So we're going to factor that out, but to what power? Well, the lowest exponent we have here is negative one third. Negative one third. So if we take out x plus two to the negative one third, we're left with three x for the first term. Not surprising there plus four. However, based on our exponent properties, based on our exponent properties, okay, this is going to be just an x plus two. x plus two to the first power. Because if we go in reverse, we would add the exponents. We would say negative one third plus one, and that would be Two thirds. So by dividing a negative one third out, we're actually subtracting the exponent from it. Okay, so we don't need the first power there. Now this, I'm going to leave the x plus two to the negative one third. This simplifies three x plus four x plus eight, which is three x seven x. Add those two together. 7x plus 8, and then we have the x plus 2 to the negative one third. And that is as factored as this is going to get. All right, so keep in mind those difference of squares, difference of cube formulas, as well as factoring by grouping. Those are going to be some staples as we continue through the course. Factoring is going to come up regularly. Okay, so this section was not very long, however, there is a lot of weight, a lot of importance placed on this. So make sure that you can do these questions because they're going to come up okay, most of the time in separate contexts.